Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, so next up is a demi loon table. Uh, just kind of a fancy word for a half round table. Uh, this particular table is designed to go next to my Maloof inspired rocking chair and I'll put a picture of that up here uh, for my living room. So it needed some of those subtle details uh, to, to kind of tie it in with that. Uh, for instance, the legs on this, I did a prototype, uh, certainly not on camera, um, but to, it ended up being the shape of the backrest uh, in the Maloof rocking chair. Um, and I have those profiles here for the rocking chair, but I needed to resize them significantly uh, for, you know, this smaller table. Uh, obviously it has some round aprons on it, which is what this stuff is for. Now this is 12 quarter material, and I haven't done any milling on this yet because I'm going to need all of it uh, to get my aprons, but we'll, we'll work on that uh, when we get there. The feet are going to have, in this particular one, I have maple down here in the bottom, and this is a, a piece of African mahogany that I did the prototype. Um, but this will be either ebony or wangi down here in the bottom of the foot on a walnut leg. Uh, and this is all the blanks for the walnut legs. Now I only need three legs, but I have four blanks, so I get some chances to screw up. So, uh, and this is a rough shape. I still think that this will curve a little bit uh, more to match the rocker. Um, but we'll see what that final shape actually is. Uh, as far as the dark foot, there is some uh, dark strips in the Maloof rocking chair, and that's where I want to tie uh, that into. Uh, back to the aprons briefly. I also think on the bottom of the apron, I'm going to do a small maple lip with a little bead detail on it. Again, just a subtle detail to tie it uh, back into that Maloof rocker. I do have the, a template for the top. Uh, so this is kind of what I based all these parts off of. And this material over here is the top, uh, which we'll probably get into first thing in the morning uh, when I come back out, because I think this glue up is gonna be first, uh, just so it has time to do, man, whatever it's going to do before I take it to final thickness which I think is going to be around six quarter. But um, the top will ultimately be last because all of these other parts get together and together they drive kind of what the final size of this top is going to be. Although this is what I'm going for, uh, if these parts end up just a little off or a little undersized or whatever, I have room in this top to adjust this as needed. So that's what's up next. We're gonna go after gluing this top up first thing in the morning and then shaping these legs and getting the feet on the bottom. Uh, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that. So we'll get after that and then final up, we'll, we'll do these rails, uh, which I still have some joinery decisions to make, whether it's going to be dono, domino, whether I'm going to do traditional mortise and tenon, I, I don't really know yet. Um, but I'll worry about that uh, when we get there. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to do any milling on this other than making one side flat. Actually, I'll probably make both sides flat. Uh, and there's two pieces here because I need two of these semicircles so I can resaw that shape uh, in the bandsaw. We'll get after all that stuff. Next up, tomorrow morning, we're going to go ahead and put this top together. And I'll, I'll kind of show you some of the, the grain stuff that I was, I was trying to deal with there. So normally, this top glue up would be pretty straightforward, and I would probably toss a couple of dominoes in it for alignment. Um, this one is a little bit odd uh, in that I shifted to get a grain match. Now I'm going to put a picture up here where I set these two boards together and put a little water on it so you can you can see better the the grain matchup that I was trying to deal with 
in the middle here. Um, and as well, I'm not going to use the dominoes for the alignment on this one. The long grain to long grain glue up is, is plenty strong and these are all still really thick. Now I'm fortunate enough to have equipment that I can fit this stock into. So if you're doing this and you need to get down closer to your final thickness uh, up front, uh, then I would suggest using some dominoes or, or biscuits or something just to help with that alignment. Um, but I'm not going to for this case. So it's kind of... So next up is these legs, uh, and they're shaped in both directions. This side just has a small taper, and of course this has uh, the shape. And I, I have my two templates for these, uh, but it's all going to start with this taper. And I don't really need to draw this taper on here, as I'll just set up a tapering jig at the table saw one time and go for it. Now it's important that we keep these off cuts and get them taped back on because we're going to need them to help keep things flat and square when we go over to the bandsaw and I'll show you that in just a minute. Now after we cut these tapers and we tape those pieces back on then we can go ahead and add our template for the curve section and take that to the bandsaw. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to start with these tapers and I'm going to tape them back on and go straight over to uh, the bandsaw and get these curves cut. Then we'll come back and we'll work on these feet. So when you're done with the bandsaw, keep those parts and get those all taped back on as well. Uh, these are just way easier to cut from a flat blank or a square blank uh, than they are from dealing with all this shape and trying to get those shoulders to line up. All right guys, so it's confession time. Uh, initially, when I made this prototype, I don't know if this shows up or not, but you can see where I nibbled away on end to create a tenon on the leg itself, and then I just merely wrapped the leg uh, with thin maple. And that was my intention here. Um, unfortunately, when I set it up over there at the table saw and started cutting, it wasn't until I was pretty close to the end that I realized that I set it up on the wrong side and cut all my tenons off. So that's not going to work. Uh, and that also made sure that my blanks were too short. Um, so what do you do? Uh, I could have started over and gotten some fresh stock. Um, but I thought this stuff was salvageable. So I went and cut some thicker wangi uh, that, that fits on here pretty well. I get it set up here right. It's, it's not bad. There's a little bit of thickness difference there, but by the time I'm done shaping and stuff, because all this is oversized, uh, I really think it'll, it'll be all right. Um, but how to attach it? Uh, without that tenon and I went to a dowel. This is a, a piece of 5 16 oak dowel that I had uh, in the shop. So I'm just going to center them up 
uh, glue them on the feet and then go to shaping the legs. Now for attachment for the, for the glue up, I am going to mix up a little bit of epoxy and a little black trans tent dye. So if there's any gaps, which I don't think there really will be, but if there is, you'll never see it. So that's what's up next. Um, and I'm probably not going to put that on camera. All I'm going to do is draw an X in the center and drill a 5 16 hole, same thing on this end, uh, and then glue it in with epoxy and put it in a clamp, just like you see here. So next up, after I get these glued tonight, we'll get after shaping these legs and everything that's involved in that, and then we'll get after those aprons, probably first thing in the morning. So next up is just to get these legs in a little better shape. Uh, I've already done uh, this one and kind of using everything in my arsenal to find what works for me from spoke shaves to rasps to my spindle sander to regular sanders, block sanders, etc. cetera. Um, and also I'll finally, I'll shape this little bottom foot here to its final length and shape. Um, so I'm gonna turn the music up and spend a few hours just getting these all pretty close. Um, there may be more shaping on this. I haven't decided yet, um, but we'll talk about that after I get all of these shaped. So on the apron stock, I did flatten one side uh, and one edge. Uh, just so that I had one square reference corner. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut just this outside profile uh, and then use that reference edge at the miter saw to get these two angles for the outside. I'll cut the inside later, probably after we do joinery and stuff. Uh, but for now, I just want to get this outside cut and then we'll do our cleanup and, and make that outside look good. So pretty much just like I did with the legs, I'm just going to go ahead and shape this outside. Uh, once this outside is shaped, then I'll just mirror that line and come back and cut the inside. I'm not real concerned with the inside because you're never going to see that. But the usual arsenal of tools and everything else, uh, this one's close enough. I'm just going to start off with a little 80 grit in here. Uh, and if that won't get it, I'll fire up the Rotex. But I think this will get it. So there's a rough first mock-up, um, and overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, my reveals aren't perfect and you know, some of these legs aren't standing up square and those sorts of things, but it's all just set in place. Um, so yeah, I think overall it's, it's coming out pretty good. Uh, my back legs are nice and square in there, so that'll make that, that back apron uh, just right. And of course, it still gets a piece of maple, but I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there's a defect over here. I'm actually going to zoom in and show you that up close. So you'll see right here, obviously there's a chunk of wood defect here, um, but this metal is a little bit more uh, disturbing, at least it was when I was on the bandsaw. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's a nail or a bullet. Um, and I'm leaning towards a bullet because it looks like it has a shiny coating on the outside and then a more silver shade on the inside. But needless to say, it can't stay there. Uh, I think what I'm actually going to do is cut these narrower and come down inside of this. Uh, but I'll probably dig that out first. But as I cut this down, and I'll show you you know, what I pulled out of it when I get it out. Um, but this one's starting to run really long. 
So I think we're gonna cut that off right here. <clears throat> when we start up the next video, we'll add the maple to this bottom, uh, which this may change that thickness just a little bit. And of course, continue shaping and getting after the joinery and getting this table put together. So until next time, guys, take care.